Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone had a great week. This video is gonna be a little bit more about computer logic and it's a continuation of this other video I made about what is computer logic. So please go watch that first if you haven't. Also, small point, I'm just gonna be away for the next few weeks, so I won't be making any new videos. So I'm gonna to try to make this one pretty good. We're gonna do a short intro today and just get straight into it. All right, let's do it. One super, super basic logical gate that we didn't talk about last time is called the inverter. And this is probably the most basic gate and it looks like this, this triangle thing. And it's only one input, one output. This is more simple than all the gates we talked about last time. If the input is one, the output is zero. If the input is zero, the output is one. It just inverts it, right? So the name inverter makes sense. So that's clear away and simple enough. Oh yeah, small point on just whenever I say one or zero, in the back of your mind, in the kind of hardware context, you should think of one as electricity flowing and zero as no electricity. So just keep that in the back of your head. When you hear one, that's electricity. When you hear zero, no electricity. All right, so this thing over here, this triangle thing, the inverter, that's pretty nice. People like to draw it. They like to draw those little triangles, but what's actually inside an inverter and how is it implemented? And let's get into that now. We're gonna talk about one basic way of implementing an inverter using CMOS technology. And this video, I can't go into the details of what CMOS is or how it works or really the science behind it, but it's probably one of the most pervasive, most common technologies, uh, circuit technologies used to make integrated circuits. And pretty much those circuits are inside everything you use. So we're gonna be using that as an example today. So we have this diagram here, and this is the CMOS diagram of an inverter. And let's just explain all these weird symbols and all these weird letters first before we move on. A is the input, easy enough, and Q is the output, all right? This is an inverter, there's one input, one output. A input, Q output. That line you see at the top that says VDD, that's actually the voltage source. That line at the top is called VDD. And when you hear the word voltage source, always think electricity is flowing, electricity is flowing. All right, now check out the line at the bottom of the diagram, which is labeled VSS. This actually means ground. And many of you might have an intuition of what ground means, but it's pretty simple. If something's connected to ground, it has no electricity or it's grounded. Okay, so what's left that we have yet to explain? Well, it's all this stuff in the middle, right? You see these weird vertically parallel lines in the middle. You can think of these two vertically parallel lines as like a gate or a connection, okay? I'm taking out some liberties with the words, but it's just to portray the meaning. So those two parallel lines, I'm gonna call them a gate. And when there's electricity at the gate, it kind of connects, makes a connection at the gate. So let's just take a minute and let's just keep looking at this diagram over here of the inverter, all right? Let's just, for example, let's say A, has electricity flowing through it, or the input is one, but let's just imagine A has electricity going through it, all right? Well, you see that gate at the bottom which connects A to ground? Well, if there's electricity at A, it's actually gonna connect the bottom gate and the output is gonna get tied to ground, all right? Do you guys see that? So pretty much what that means is when A has electricity, it's tying the output to ground and the output's gonna be zero. Now look at the diagram again, and look at the gate at the top that's connected to the voltage source. It has a little dot in front of the gate, all right? So what does that little dot in front of the two parallel lines means? Well, that little dot is kind of like opposite, an opposite gate. And what that means is for that opposite gate, if there's electricity going to the gate, it's actually not gonna become connected. And it's actually gonna be connected if there's no electricity, all right? So it actually works the opposite of how a normal gate works if that little dot is there. Okay, so let's just go back to our example a little bit and let's just say A has no electricity now, all right? So it's zero, no electricity. Well, as we just talked about, if there's no electricity, that opposite gate is actually gonna turn on and connect the output to the voltage source and the output's gonna have electricity. So I just spit out a lot kind of fast, but let's just let this all sink in. 
try to let this all sink in a little bit and see exactly what just happened. If A has electricity, Q gets connected to ground and not the voltage source. So Q has no electricity. Now the flip side, if A has no electricity, Q is actually gonna get connected to the voltage source and it's gonna have electricity flowing. So what's actually happened here is pretty much exactly what we're talking about. This is an inversion of electricity. It's just inverting the input, right? Most people don't draw like this. Everyone just draws it as that triangle thing, but behind the scenes, this is kind of what's happening. All right, so that's a little trivial, right? Just an inverter, how it kind of works with electricity. Let's move on to something a little more complicated, which is the NAND gate. Uh, we didn't talk about this in part one, but I'm gonna put up the logical diagram here of what NAND really means, all right? It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just the inversion of AND, or the opposite of AND. If you understand the AND concept, NAND is literally just the opposite of AND, all right? Two inputs, one output, just the opposite of AND. So I'm gonna put up the logic table right here and just check that out real quick and let it sink in of what NAND is representing. So I'm gonna leave the logic table up there for NAND, but also check out a CMOS diagram of NAND, which is exactly the same symbols and stuff we just talked about with the inverter, but now it's gonna be implementing the NAND logic. All right, so we're gonna walk through just one of the cases for the NAND gate, and I'll leave the rest of the examples up for you, up to you guys to check out in your free time, but let's just walk through the case for NAND. When both inputs are one, the output is zero. And let's just see how that flows in our CMOS diagram. Remember, both inputs are one, or in other words, both inputs have electricity, all right? And let's follow that flow in our diagram. All right, so in this diagram, you can see how A and B are feeding into two of the gates that's connecting the output with ground, right? And if both those gates are connected, or if both A and B are one, the output is actually gonna get connected to ground and it's gonna turn zero. Actually, for the NAND gate, the only way for the output to be zero is if both inputs are actually one, all right? And every other combination, the output is actually gonna be one. And I'll leave it to you guys as an exercise to just follow that flow with the CMOS diagram and just trace, kind of trace with your fingers almost how the electricity flows from input to output. Let's just check out what the NAND gate looks like in real life. So we just looked at a CMOS diagram of NAND gate, which is still a little more abstract and theoretical, but now this is a metal or layout diagram of a NAND gate, and it's really colorful, right? I can't explain all these cool colors and stuff today, but this is actually what we call layout. And this is physically what's happening to implement this NAND gate. So you can see VDD is that cool blue color at the top. Well, there's electricity flowing through that metal. And if you see all those little black squares, those are like metal contact points, which connects like different layers of metal with each other, those black squares. So this is essentially what layout, layout looks like. It's extremely complicated, and this is one of the most simple diagrams of layout for this one gate, but just this is what it looks like in real life. All right, guys? So as we all know, for engineering, programming, hardware, everything is building blocks, right? Everything builds on top of each other. We just went over the NAND gate, which is a really simple one gate, one simple CMOS diagram, but check out this diagram for an adder, all right? It starts to get pretty complicated pretty fast. Once things start getting more and more complicated, people also draw things a little more simply, right? No one actually draws VDD and ground all the time, right? They still use those triangles, boxes, and squares, right? And when things get even more complicated, they just draw things with bigger boxes, with little boxes inside them, all right? So we just kind of took the deepest dive to see like what it looks like on the ground level. And guys, also remember, inside every single little box, inside every single little triangle that you might see in a diagram, under the hood in real life, it's actually different pieces of metal, like a shit ton of metal intertwined, connected, and all doing these smart things with electricity flowing through that metal, all right? Inside every little box you see in those diagrams, all it is, electricity flowing through layers of metal. 
finally, I just want to show you guys what this looks like um, in an even more real world example, but this is a blown up picture of Apple's A5 uh, chip. This is one of like the most famous chips. It was first introduced in the iPhone 5, 5S. So you can see how there's different sections of different things on this chip, right? There's like processors, there's memories, all those little boxes has a ton of metal going through them all the time. And that thing goes inside an iPhone and that iPhone is running all your games every day, all right? So from all the way up to all the way bottom, there's a lot of cool stuff going on, but this was just a deeper dive into how logic kind of works and how electricity really flows through physical things to make it happen. All right guys, that's the end of the video. Kind of long, hopefully it was a good one. Not gonna be making a video for a few weeks because just going on vacation, so I won't see you guys for a while. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Please like the video if you liked it and take care.